Will Lenovo be the first to launch a Windows 8 tablet in October? Speaking of October, is that when we're going to see Windows 8 at all? Is Mog off the auction block and into the arms of HTC and Beats? And are gamers going to be able to change the ending of Mass Effect 3? All that and more on today's Rumor Has It. It's Tuesday, March 20th, 2012, and welcome to Rumor Has It. I'm Kareen Levy. And I'm Emily Dreyfus, and you are watching the internet's techiest gambling show, where every day or every week we round up the hottest rumors and then we bet on them game show style. <laughs> that was that. That's, That's it. it. That's all we That's do. That's what you're watching. So speaking of, let's cut to the rumor uh, has it game board real fast. You'll see that Claire Emily is. Seven. Oh yeah, I have seven <laughs> points. You can't see it, but <laughs> that, trust it me, looks it's like there. a T. <laughs> I don't. I do a seven like my parents taught me. No, no, me too. That's how I do it. Oh, good. That the European way. <laughs> um, so the reason why I got another point is because, but I'm still losing, mind you, mm -hmm. don't get too worked up, is way back in episode three, a hundred years ago, we voted on whether the Xbox would be announced at E3. And uh, just the other day, just recently, we had a story that uh, Microsoft said, don't expect a new Xbox anytime soon. soon. They will not be announcing it at E3. And that was the episode where Sharon Vaknin filled in for Emily. God damn. So, And she voted that it will be announced at E3. And I said no. And uh, the moral of that story is neither of us can ever go on vacation ever again because yeah. whoever replaces because us Because I was does. literally in Chile and I like I got a cold shiver in the, in the Andes because I... <laughs> I like knew that something had gone terribly wrong. Yeah. And you're all, I'm so uh, cold. And I mean, I guess that honestly, like I really should have done a little bit of due diligence and informed Sharon that I had already voted in a previous episode that we were not going to see the Xbox until 2014. And then we voted, there was another rumor and she contradicted my earlier oh, vote. I don't even remember that 2014. Was that? Yeah, that was like on episode one, <laughs> which we have like, I have not we never kept track. when and we first started the show we like wrote it down on post-it notes barely and like have <laughs> yeah. no idea what happened in the beginning and so i for a while i felt like should i even have to take this lost point because i didn't bet it and my real heart said the other way but no that those are the rules of the game i had a substitute the substitute failed me yeah <laughs> and i mean she, i don't know no, i don't she think didn't. it was what, not you know i mean what? she did fail you but i don't think it was uh i don't think it was a bad vote because why not of I course mean, not anything can and be the other thing announced. is that sharon maybe you'll be right maybe we'll be proved wrong and maybe microsoft's definition of soon is not what we think and we will see it before well they said e3 yeah well that they're not gonna release it at okay e3. fine <laughs> sorry <laughs> i mean no I, but i mean to her credit sharon is a gamer she plays video games and mm -hmm. you don't so maybe you know but maybe she, she was bringing her own personal bias to it because since i don't care about video games i'm like yeah <laughs> 2014 whatever yeah won't affect my life at all totally what? well and then in a later episode i voted that it's going to come out in 2013 i mean with this xbox rumor it was like the ipad rumor or the kindle fire rumor which in the samsung s3 the whatever the nexus that one that we keep voting on every <laughs> the week galaxy we, s3 yeah that whatever yeah <laughs> we were like we on, vote yes no we vote no no we vote yes, yes. it'll have this, don't know. it'll have that and so now we've just like put the kibosh yeah the kibosh <laughs> on, on any possibility to get any votes yeah because we've already voted on everything having to do with that phone i don't want to yeah. talk about it anymore we're not going to Except so we probably will one day okay so let us let us continue please yes proceed um the first rumor guys that i have for you i have two Windows 8 related rumors today. Give a round of applause. Yay, it's Windows Microsoft. 8. It's not Apple. <laughs> um, so the first rumor is that Lenovo, not Dell, will launch the first Windows 8 tablet in October, a report says. So citing unidentified sources, you guessed it. The usual. I just had to drink. Sorry about that pause. I was taking a sip because this is a drinking game if you've forgotten. And anytime we say unidentified sources, you need to be imbibing whatever liquid is nearby that is potable. Um, so citing unidentified sources, The Verge reported yesterday that Lenovo will be the first company to launch a Windows 8 tablet. 
their unidentified sources that they don't even give us any inkling or hint even at where all they're from. Of where they live. Probably what from they Digit do. Times. They could be the dude at the window at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Wh- who knows? But according to that dude at Kentucky Fried Chicken, um, Lenovo will get it b- ahead of Dell and ahead of HP, who have both also gone on the record and said that they're going to have Windows 8 tablets for sure. Um, now, this... The the guy at Kentucky Fried Chicken, <laughs> I'm using quote marks here, <laughs> Colonel Sanders. Uh, Colonel Sanders also told The Verge that the device will come with an Intel chip, um, which makes a lot of sense. And so this contradicts what the Dell CEO, Michael Dell, <laughs> aw, um, <laughs> went as far as to tell Bloomberg, which was that his company was going to launch a Windows tablet the same day as Windows 8. So that so, will be their their launch pad. Their, what is it called? Their like main the thing, <laughs> the mm, word for when flagship it, flagship <laughs> <laughs> launch pad the landing launch device. Pad. Yeah, yeah, that'll be their flagship. I mean, that is how they'll announce the Windows Eight will be with the with the, with a Dell with a Dell tablet. Was what Dell was saying. But then this is saying that actually Lenovo will be the first one. So I don't know if perhaps maybe. The Lenovo tablet will come out a little bit sooner, and then on the day that Windows 8 is available, we'll get the Dell. I'm not sure. Or maybe they don't know, or maybe they're fighting, or maybe this report is wrong. Or or I'm not sure. (laughs) But um, there's speculation that if this report is correct and Lenovo is going to be the one with the first Windows 8 tablet, people have speculated that this could be the IdeaPad Yoga do you guys remember that? From from, from CES. CES. Yeah. The worst name ever. They might as well have called it the pretzel. The the <laughs> yeah. downward facing dog. Yeah. The warrior one. I hate yoga. I, I just took I yoga like, class the other I day. I can't do it. It's too Steven, can you name any other moves? Um down uh Sunshine pose. <laughs> that's that's. I think that's one. Yeah, greeting pose, right? Yeah, greeting. I love, I child's really, pose is child's fun. pose. I know. Yeah, yeah. that one's pretty. I really easy. like. I like Pilates. I, yoga is just too woo woo for me. Sorry, I know it's really good for you. I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, it doesn't have to be woo woo, but I know maybe my, my experience with it has been very woo woo, and I'm just, I can't. Anyway, sorry. But so I this thing is called the Idea Pad Yoga. And the reason why it has this insufferable title is that it's actually kind of a neat concept, and it is sort of exemplified by yoga, which is all about bending and stretching. There it is right there. You can see, if you're listening to the podcast right now and you can't see what we're looking at, it's basically like, a PC that is open halfway and propped up on its on both sides, so it's forming almost like a V or a, an A line, A frame, A frame, right? Um, and what it has that's so neat is a hinge that allows the screen to fold all the way back on itself, so that it can be used. At, in tablet mode, they call it, and that would be if it was flattened all the way completely and the keyboard and the screen are right up against each other, you could hold it like it's a tablet, or you can flip it all the way around and, and use it in normal laptop mode, or you I can... I love this idea. It's, it's awesome. a great idea. I mean, it is it's like, a great it, idea. You know, then you don't need to buy a separate keyboard, like like a Bluetooth keyboard that people are doing for their tablets or whatever. It's already there. It's already and it's there. it's just in a very convenient hinge. And I mean, I would take issue with the people who are saying that this would be the first Windows 8 tablet, because in my estimation, that is a laptop that fun- has <clears throat> the ability to be used like a tablet, but it's not a tablet. Right, because a tablet by definition does not have a key i mean exactly. it's just the screen it exactly. doesn't have a keyboard so yeah it's, so know. so this is a laptop that has a tablet for a screen and a, uh, according to lenovo a really really high quality hinge that won't break because these type of convertible things are always a little bit problematic because the hinge if it breaks then you then have it, your a keyboard shot, and a yeah. screen <laughs> exactly and and often you know something that is a movable piece like that it's easy to break. So the big problem, the big question is, how good is this hinge? Lenovo says it's great. Right. Well, and also, it look, I mean, it looks heavy, but it has to be light. Like, yeah. it has to, you know, follow would- the movement of tablets. It has to be light. It has to be, you know, portable and whatever. Yeah. And then this, this keyboard should not get in the way of all those other things. At all. And and I mean, obviously, because of the keyboard, it will be heavier than any other tablet. Right. right. But it might be a good trade off for people who are, you know, I mean, honestly, I might be one of the people who would want this because as a writer, I constantly need a keyboard and I don't use my iPad 
at all for any work-related tasks. And I would never take it with me, like on a trip by myself, um, just take the iPad because I need to write. And I'm not going to write on the tablet. Have you considered a Bluetooth keyboard? I have. They're kind of pricey. Yeah, but the, they're like 60 bucks. Well, yeah, yeah. And I already have a little tiny Windows computer that if a I'm going to go that far, yeah, it's basically a netbook. I might as well just use that. So yeah. I, I kind of, but if I were to get my next computer and if this had a really strong processor and Core i5 and things like that, like I want it. Yeah. Um, so that that's interesting. We'll see. Now, this brings us to our next rumor because yes. this rumor jives all related. very, very well with the next rumor, which is that Windows 8 will reportedly be released in October. So that is what this rumor we've been reading was saying, was that uh, the first Windows 8 tablet will come out in October from Lenovo. Now, Bloomberg is reporting that, yes, in fact, Windows 8 will have an October debut. Our news editor, Jay Green, who has the uh, Microsoft Beat, uh, reported that this means it would be done in the summer. They'd send it out to manufacturers in the summer, and then they can get it onto their devices and do all of that and create apps for it and software and da-da-da, which they've already been doing because developer previews have been out there. Um, and then we will get it in October, and then they will have versions of it that are running on an ARM chip architecture mm -hmm. and then also some that are running on x86 chips and that is i don't know why bloomberg even really needed to say that because it's completely obvious <laughs> because arm chips are what go into tablets because they're lighter and faster and 86 x86 chips are what go into traditional pcs and we know windows 8 is putting a huge emphasis right, on mobile it's gonna go everywhere so obviously they're gonna have tablets i guess what's interesting about this rumor that bloomberg also is citing anonymous sources to bring us oh, drink, drink is that it will not have more than it will not launch on more than five arm system chip architecture devices and so what that basically means is there will not be more than five tablets that it will launch on. that will launch on. so if we you know we say this dell uh-huh the lenovo hp hp and um nokia Right? No. Don't forget from about last Nokia. Week. So that's four. So what would be the fifth? Oh, it'll be the fifth. The iPad. <laughs> Just gonna it'll be the Apple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apple's like, we want in on this game. <laughs> um, and then people were saying, Jay Green wrote, having fewer than five devices, though, would offer consumers only slight alternatives to Apple's hugely popular iPad. And I disagree with Jay because... I think it's better to focus on fewer and make them great than right. throw a hundred Windows 8 tablets out there and have one of them be the my czar touch from right, Walgreens. Right, which is kind of what, you know, what, what, Andro what exactly. happened with the Android, and now it's so fragmented that people are like, now it's all about the price. And, with, yeah. and I mean, if there are fewer uh, to com competing with each other, fewer Windows tablets competing yeah. with each other, not to mention competing with Android, not to mention competing with the iPad, yeah. then they can focus on price, on how great it is. They can each have a, you know, a little bit something different and people won't get confused and can be like, I have the Dell, I have yeah. the HP, whatever. And instead of Samsung making 14 different tablets, right, just make every their single one size. tablet yeah. running Windows 8 and make it great. Right. And make it hit the price point that yeah. we want it to be at, hit the, you know, screen size, hit yeah. the battery life, like, and by having only one one, so each you know company is focusing on one rather than 14 then they can yeah. do all that and then people won't be as disappointed as they are with like every single samsung and whatever. also i think it sends a good message to consumers like if you are hp and you only make one windows 8 tablet and it's great and you put a lot of work into it what that says to me is that you've committed to the choices you made about this tablet because you believe they're the right choices you believe the screen size is correct you believe the resolution is awesome and all of that whereas when you give me 17 different ones i i feel like it means you the manufacturer are wavering and you're like i don't really know exactly which one of these is gonna work best i'm just gonna like throw them all out there and hope that one of them strikes your fancy right and i don't feel like i'm in good hands right and i mean to you know to play devil's advocate they're probably saying like look we listen to consumers we want to give you a seven inch a five inch a 10 inch a 20 inch a yeah four, you know 14 and like just give them everything i, I totally but think then that it's competing is what with they're itself. doing it's competing with itself and i think it's also just poor planning because a tablet is an unnecessary object no matter how many times <laughs> apple's yeah. like Totally commercials tell you that you're not going to be able to learn a new language or, or find live. love or live <laughs> or if you don't have an iPad. That's <laughs> not true. Like, you don't need an iPad ever. You don't need a tablet. I mean, you 
It can be additive for your life and bring value, but it is not necessary. Right. It's not food. No. <laughs> and so <laughs> for, for I feel like the tablet manufacturers who make like a million different options are saying like, this one is going to be work, going to work for this one. And this one will fit your needs in this way. And this one, da, 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 and this one, will da, 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 da. But really, y- you don't need any of them. So what would be better is if they just said, this is the one that is like, one size fits all, awesome for everyone. Right, it ha- exactly. It's running a great OS. Yeah. It has a great battery life, just, you know, just as we were saying, like, totally. Yeah, I don't I mean, know that that's best for know. consumers, but it's definitely best for manufacturers. That's my advice. I guess, um, why am I on the side of the man in this argument? I don't know. But <laughs> You're I, the 1% today. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretending to be the 1%, but I just think it's that was what I would advise. Lenovo, HP, Nokia. Nokia. Oh, poor Nokia. They're Aww. like, they're all Windows 8 is ours. Oops. Oopsies. <laughs> yeah. It's like they caught Windows 8 kissing someone else behind the schoolyard. Totally. <laughs> and Windows 8 is like, what? We're not married. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I never gave you my promise ring, Nokia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, remember. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> totally. It's like that Homer Simpson thing. <laughs> Anyway, that's our Windows 8 moment for today. Um, Yeah, I think with that, we should take a break. Yeah, let's take a mini break, and we'll see you on the other side. Cool. And we're back. Thank you for rejoining us after that quick break. Uh, for the people watching live, that was the song What Is Love played on eight <laughs> floppy disk drives. <laughs> and that was like that, you know, when they, that dance uh-huh. when they were like <laughs> knocking their heads from um, Siren Alive. Yeah, but and then that movie. The night. Yeah, I refuse. Uh, night at the Roxbury. Night at the Roxbury. Wow. I'm all night one night at the Apollo. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> so from night at the Roxbury. Um, so anyway, let us continue with our rumors. Rumor has it. If we will because this is called Rumor Has It. It's a game show. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not the show where we just watch random videos all the time. Yeah, I mean, it could be. That would be a completely different show. <laughs> so uh, here 404. is a rumor. The title of it is Mog. The music company Mog is rumored to have been sold to HTC Beats. If we want to say that another way, HTC Beats has bought, boughten, no bought, you got it, has boughten Mog. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean, to even be a little bit clearer, Beats, according to this rumor, has boughten Mog, not HTC. So You're killing me. I know. I love doing that. I'm a copy editor. I say boughten. No! It's already been boughten. No! So, um, according to a single source, that's why this rumor is hilarious. According to one, one guy, dude. Uh, dug up by Business Insider. Oh, wow. Business Insider? My favorite. Wow. In HTC's Beats, the audio tech company has purchased Mog. GigaOM said it confirmed it by with uh, maybe one other person <laughs> said it, but I don't believe them ever. So <laughs> Mog didn't respond to requests for comment, but told Business Insider, we're always looking for the best opportunity for our business and shareholders, but don't comment on specific of those uh, specifics of those conversations. Nothing to confirm at this time. So it is still a rumor as of today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mog is a subscription-based music company, kind of like Spotify or RDO or Rhapsody or whatever. The main difference between it and the other big guys is that it's not a big guy 
website at all. And um, it doesn't have as many subscribers as those other uh, subscription-based music companies do. It hmm. doesn't have as many songs. But it does have the highest quality it's tunes basically out not of as all good. of them. <laughs> right. It has I mean, the highest quality at 320 kilobits per second which is really high quality okay. audio. Um, the reason I know that is because one time I wrote a, a an article oh, for yeah. CNET, which is which music service should you use? And I got 128 comments on it, all saying that I should have added Zune. <laughs> and oh, everybody yeah. was so mean. Zune's mm. a big deal. We get that. We get a lot of people emailing us on Buzz Out Loud about Zune Pass. And yeah, and it's a great, you know. And and I said, fine. I, you're right. I should yeah. have included it, so I included it. But anyway, that's how we oh, learned about. Look Mog. at how you listened and responded to feedback. I listened to the people. I I really wanted to make everybody happy. I. <laughs> <laughs> I you're guess. like, love me. I'm like, please <laughs> don't delete my email address. So anyway, so this follows rumors from a couple weeks ago that the service was on the auction block. So we had reported mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago that Mog was for sale, was putting itself up for sale. They didn't confirm that either. Um, this also follows rumors from uh, before Mobile World Congress that Beats and HTC were launching their own music service, oh, which didn't... yeah, we did talk about that in the show, right? And which did, but that never panned out. Um, but why create your own music service when you could just buy one? Yeah. And then as like, for HTC, according to this rumor, they didn't even have to buy it themselves. They let it let Beats buy it, and you know they own fifty one percent stake in Beats, so it's basically them. Oh, perfect. But it's just you know that division. So let Beats handle the music thing and whatever. We and they've got a bunch of extra money lying around from how much they charge for those headphones. Oh, I know they're ridiculously oh. expensive, but they're awesome and they work really well. Totally, except for that they make it seem like it is okay to charge four hundred dollars <laughs> for the cheapest version of. I know. Maybe it's, it's three hundred. Maybe it's two hundred. Either it's way, it's insane. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's three hundred. I think the cheapest one is two ninety nine. Yeah, I went yeah. to buy it for my brother as a right. present at Best Buy, and I honestly have never felt like more of a popper because I had promised him this gift, and we go there, and then I see the price, and I was like, nope, sorry, I can't. There's no way yeah. you're gonna have to choose the forty nine dollar ones. <laughs> I don't care. Sorry, and they're made by Sony. Yeah, and, and I was like, probably just actually, as good. I've never sorry. heard of the company they're made by, but <laughs> yeah. you're getting them. Um, so anyway, so Mog already has mobile apps in place for its services uh, for Android. Android and iOS and BlackBerry app is on the way. A BlackBerry app is on the way. Though if HTC is involved, it would probably have to make a Windows app, right? Because HTC has Windows phones. And yes. that's where this rumor starts to lose steam. Um, because Mog has recently given a thumbs down to a Windows app because they didn't have the resources to make one. Interesting. Oh, well, but maybe now they will. Right. So maybe yeah. now they will. I mean, HTC has other... It has Android and whatever. Mm -hmm. They have everything. But Windows, I think, is, you know, next on the horizon for them. Hmm. But what I re why I think this rumor actually does hold water is that when HTC shacked up with Beats, it did so because it wanted to be different from the, you know, other companies. They wanted to, like, mm. focus on music or focus. I, I think they also uh, bought OpenApp. I think that's Ugh. what it's called, which was, like, your... The, it was something that you you can like it's talk a developer to your computer, thing? talk to your. The, it was like an app that you can like see your computer on your whatever. It was, oh, okay, on your phone other, and yeah, combine everything. I think so. And so, but I, but you know, but now that they've purchased Beats or have you know become a big stakeholder in Beats, their focus is on music, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, now HTC phones are going to be the ones you go to if you're a music lover, because not only do they have the, you know, Beats audio, but now if they have a music subscription service built in, kind of how Cricket Wireless has Move Music, oh, you know, cool. then then maybe you'll get like a great subscription fee or something or two months free of Mog or whatever, like hmm. if you buy their phones. So maybe it's like if you are not in the iTunes universe, but you're someone who really cares about music and you're looking for a um, great music phone, instead right. of the iPhone, you should go for HTC's well, uh, new phones. Right, but the difference between Mog and iTunes is that Mog is a subscription service, so you have all the music in the world on their servers, you don't have to buy it, you just buy yeah. a monthly plan. And with iTunes, you have to you know purchase the songs or upload it yourself. But I think some people who are so like stuck in the iTunes world wouldn't even consider trying a subscription service because they're so, unless it was available on iTunes or on, um, the iPhone mm -hmm. because they're so they need iTunes right to to manage to manage music. their music I see and I think Mog Mog does have a music management side to it I'm not sure if it's available through the app itself mm -hmm. but you know you can manage music 
And oh, HTC awesome. probably has its own music management in there. Like, I think my phone, which is HTC, has some music management software in there, and I just don't ever use it because it doesn't have enough room to hold any. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and I have Rhapsody on my phone, and I love it. I, I use oh. it all the time. You know, I think I'm actually mistaken. I don't think Mo – let me let me read my article that I wrote <laughs> about this thing. I don't think – let's see, I said who should – if you're – who shouldn't use Mog? There's no way to manage the music you own that's not in its catalog. Okay, so you can't manage your own music through Mog. So that maybe that would be something that they change, or you use HTC's like internal yeah. program to manage your own music. In any case, here's another reason why I think that this uh, rumor holds true is because if HTC is going in this direction and Beats and they want to have a music subscription service. Mog doesn't have as many subscribers as the other guys, so its price is probably going to be cheaper. Like even if HTC oh. and Beats wanted to buy Spotify, it's pr it'll probably be astronomical. Like they'll never be able to afford it. You know, Rhapsody bought Napster, so Napster doesn't exist anymore mm -hmm. uh, by itself. Rhapsody has a million subscribers; it's probably too expensive. So the only ones left really are Audio and Mog. And since Mog has the better audio quality. And I don't think RDO wants to sell. I think that they believe that they can still get better and better and better and compete and take over. Right. And if Mog was already, you know, maybe on the chopping block mm -hmm. as they, you know, it's not really confirmed, but they confirmed it to, see, you know, who knows? Why wouldn't they sell it to Beats? Go for it. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. So that was that. Now let us continue to my favorite rumor that might I not know, be you're a rumor. So I know, I'm so excited about it. Excited, but it's like, I can't wait till I get to talk about this rumor. I know. Well, it's not even a rumor necessarily. It's just like this thing that's been going it may on. Happen. They just talked about it on the, um, I need to use my head headphones as a headband. <laughs> um, they just talked about it on the 404, or 404 earlier. Somebody called about it, but mm. Bioware maybe is considering changing the ending of Mass Effect 3. What? Which, I mean, which is a little bit not quite what Bioware said. Ooh. What's that? Is that the, um... It's the Mass Effect 3 trailer. Trailer. <clears throat> this game looks so awesome, and I... know, I, I would love to play it. I, uh, so once upon a time, there was a hit blockbuster, amazing, humongous game came out. Mass did come Effect. Out. It was called Mass Effect. <laughs> oh my God. In it, you had it. to have conversations with others. You had to make relationships with others. You had to shoot others. And then the end, you had to save the galaxy. <laughs> you had to, that's what you had to do. So cut to Mass Effect 3, which just launched on March 6th, sold almost 900,000 copies in 24 hours. OMG. But then, yo. you know, everybody played it for 24 hours straight. So by March 7th, everybody was pissed because they got to the ending and <laughs> it was horrible, according to them. They hated the ending. We won't wah, give any wah. spoilers, guys, so but they hated it. One fan is reportedly so mad that he filed a false advertising complaint with the FTC, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is awesome. Oh, I love it how people in America really believe false advertising is a thing. Uh, yeah, it's and not. It's really not. You could say anything you want. So regarding the end to Mass Effect 3, the executive producer of the game, Casey Hudson, said last week that he wanted the game to be memorable, admitting that the conclusion was intentionally designed to get gamers talking. Bioware says it's actively and seriously taking all feedback into consideration with no decision made yet regarding end to space bound role playing game. So this might not even be end. It might be the end, or it's probably the end of this person's story, but Shepard. Shepard, but there might be um, other Mass Effect games that, you know, tra whatever, go into a new direction. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, someone in the chat room is saying I know, it's just no, like The Sopranos. No, totally. So <laughs> so I, I, I don't want to give any spoilers for people who still want to play the game. I talked with Eric Franklin yesterday. He's a huge fan. He's like, I have not been reading very much about it because I don't want to spoil it. He's in the middle of playing it. But... Um, oh my oh, god, I can't wait for him to get to the end and I know, and freak see, out. Well, and then, but so really quick though, members of the Mass Effect community have formed this charity petition, petition called Retake Mass Effect <laughs> Chip In Fund, where they're collecting <laughs> PayPal donations for a charity as a way of encouraging Bioware to make an alternate ending. And the fund has amassed almost seventy thousand oh, dollars is no. that money gonna then go to bioware no, or to, to the charity? charity to the charity just to get their attention that they're like getting whatever okay. and then it says in quote so we would like to dispel the perception that we are angry or entitled we simply wish to express our hope that there could be a different direction for a series we have all grown to love so that's how they're trying to get bioware's wow. attention by raising money for this charity and they're not entitled 
they just really hope that you won't crush they their souls. Ho- so Eric is like, you know, when I talked with him about it, because I was like, you know, tell me about this game, whatever. He was like, I just can't. He's like, even if I hate the ending, then I just hate the ending. Like, whatever. It's already out there. You can't change it. It's just out there i mean and there I, is something deflating and it is kind of like the sopranos about investing all this time in something and then it doesn't end the way you want and it's over and you're left with this like feeling of just loss yeah and you spent you know years of your life playing this game you've yeah. invested money and time in three mass effect games oh my god and you know like hours I said, that you could have been talking to your girlfriend hours that you could have been playing assassin's creed <laughs> <laughs> right after, oh, there yeah. you go there you mm-hmm. go ubisoft um so you know I, again i don't want to spoil it but i read spoilers because i'm that guy who does that i always do that <laughs> i always read the spoilers for everything and then i'm like why did i do that so i read <laughs> oh the spoilers God. i read a spoiler and because i haven't played the game it only made so so sense because it went like super into depth about all the plot holes but apparently there are plot holes and it's anticlimactic that's all I'll say. So people are, are mad, obviously, mm-hmm, because, mm-hmm. you know, such a, a huge uh, game that they've invested so much time in is anticlimactic. And the whole game is, you know, climax. I mean, not to be gross, but like, it's but like yeah, you're saving the universe. But you know what? I actually think that happens with a lot of these like grand concept entertainment things. I mean, does anyone remember Lost? Do you remember how yeah. all of that was like this grand tease that needed to lead to some huge, enormous thing? And then you were kind of like, oh, yeah, that was the end. But like, but I mean, can you imagine <laughs> writing to the lost writers and I'm being sure like, please a million change. people exactly. Did. And so the thing about this, uh, Bioware is not saying we are going to change anything. They're just like we're listening. I yeah. mean, which doesn't really mean anything. Well, we were gonna like uh, we were talking yesterday about what would really, in all seriousness, the likelihood be of them changing the ending, and. Uh, I think we both agree that it's pretty slim because of how much money and time and effort would go into creating a new ending that they would send out to people. Like, come on. Millions of dollars. We're George talking. Lucas did it to Star Wars. Why, why <laughs> wouldn't they do it here? Totally. I <laughs> That's mean, true. And then he was like, I didn't change it. That was always like that. Um, and uh, James Cameron did it to uh, Titanic. What? <laughs> I'm just oh my God! Are you telling I'm me gonna... there's a version of Titanic in which Leonardo DiCaprio does not? <laughs> yeah. Die? So I'm, like, I really I was... so what? Oh I my really God. hated when the Titanic sank. So I'm going to write a letter to James Cameron <laughs> and be like, please, when you release Titanic 3D, I'm really mad. I'm gonna give money to charity and please don't make it end that way. Change the ending because <laughs> I said so and so did all my buddies. <laughs> so. I mean, they do that. Like, actually, Americans are notorious for not being able to handle. Hard Hard endings. Um, do you guys know about the the book, The Clockwork Orange? I love yes, it. Yes, um, I love that book. In, in Britain, when it came out, and I think it's written by Burgess, uh, it has an ending in which the, it, everything is terrible, and it's a tragedy, because it's a violent, horrifying tragedy. And then they went to um, do it in America, and they were like, nope, we need a happier ending. <laughs> so there is a different ending yeah. for the American version that like wraps oh. it up and See, there's a and little bit of because of that now years later we we still think we can do that and write letters to a company that they're like we already put this game yeah, out they're like deal this with it the culture end. yeah exactly this is what we said this is i mean and i get it like it's an it's a bad ending or whatever people don't like the ending but like that's the ending that BioWare went with. And if you don't like it, then you just don't like it. Like, you can't yeah. make them change it. I mean, you can, and they'll probably offer a downloadable re-ending. You'll have to pay 25 bucks for it. And then it's like, oh, guess who came out the winner? BioWare, because they just made a million more <laughs> yeah. dollars on, you know, a DLC <laughs> yes. of, of a new ending. So keep keep it up. Keep it up, America. Yeah. Keep it up. Spend your money keep unnecessarily. Up, yeah. Buy an iPad that you don't need <laughs> buy a dlc because you didn't like the ending of this game so i don't no, know that's so, why i love us no i love us We're too and listen, by, but but why the you know the headlines uh that are in the media right now are a little bit misleading is that bioware never said that they're going to change it they're just like we're listening we hear you we see we're leaving it open so that you know yeah. which is good i mean it's good it's that better they're than listening. them saying whiny little babies of course we're not going to change it yeah which is what they could have said yeah exactly so they're listening as they should i mean they're making this game for the people and the people are revolting <laughs> not to be confused <laughs> with revolting <laughs> So anyway, that wraps up that rumor. Bam! Should we go on to yays or nays? Yay or nay? Yay! 
if this were, um, you know, 19th century England and someone were playing that harpsichord, one of us would have to stand in front of the room and sing. That's what women were good for. I mean, can you F- blame them? Why I? Get back in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, sing me a song. <laughs> Sew me a sock. Um, so- <laughs> Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right, please, let let us continue. Okay, you are the reader. I am oh. the transcriber. Android to pwn the iPad market by 2016? No. Mm. Oh, oops, I put that for me. I said no, too. Okay. No? Is an Office web app's refresh likely on Microsoft's menu? Yeah? I say yay, too. Uh-oh. I guess we're voting the same. Will the HTC One X be Sprint's first LTE smartphone? Oh, yeah. I say nay. I'm going to be contrarian. And now, let us please have a moment of silence for how sad it is that Sprint does not have a 4G phone yet. Okay. Thank you. That was good enough. That was a moment of silence (laughs) for HTC. All right, (laughs) so that is the end of yays or nays. Thank you for joining us for that. And now let us proceed to the voting. The voting round. So we have had 25 episodes. OMG. That's a lot of episodes. We can legally rent a vehicle without having to pay extra. I know. We're 25 (laughs) years old. Weeks old. Um, Okay, so is Lenovo... The first to launch a Windows 8 tablet in October, according to the report? I say no. I say yes. Windows 8 reportedly set for October debut? I say yes. I say yes, too. I said yours on the internet. (laughs) Um, Did Beats by Mog? I say yours. I say yours as well. (laughs) And will Bioware change the ending to Mass Effect 3? No way. I say no way, too. I guess we have sort of a game. We have sort of a game here. Yeah, we, we stopped taking sucker bets. <laughs> we, we decided yeah, to bet yeah. from our gut. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> now we have a couple, three voicemails oh, from this MG. week. I know. We left I haven't our, even heard them yet. We left ourselves just enough time yeah, for these perfect. three rumors. That affect the I mean, <laughs> voicemails. The first one is from Jeff in Las Vegas, who is calling from the iPad line. Hi, Rumor Has It. This is Jeff from Las Vegas, also known as Flaming Printer on the chat room. Oh, hi. I'm calling from the Apple's new iPad line in Las Vegas. (laughs) And it's pretty long, but I'm up there and I'm going to get the new iPad. And I wanted to call and tell you guys I really love the show. And unlike what someone said earlier, I'm glad Steven is starting to talk talk more on the show. <laughs> Who said that they didn't like Steven? It makes talk, it feel like you all are good friends. So, Aww. hope you guys make it up to a thousand. Crank it up to a thousand. Thank you, Jeff, from <laughs> Vegas. You. Line, and I hope you love your new yeah, iPad. Yeah, let us know. Call us and let us know what you think of your iPad. Is it too hot? I've been hearing rumors oh God, about it being too hot. It's Flaming Printer from yeah. the chat room. Is he in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Flaming Printer. Flaming Printer. So somebody <laughs> said that they don't like Stephen talking. I that? will that's find that person and slap person them with a the glove. Who said you, that? I don't know, I but didn't. that's what Jeff said. I will said. fight you. <laughs> I will that, fight you. Yeah, yeah we're <laughs> strong. We do he yoga. Said, he said, contrary to what people are saying, I like that Stephen talks more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let us move on to our second voicemail of the week. Okay, this one is... From Steve from Maryland, and he's teaching us how to bet properly. <laughs> Which we need a lot of help with. Hey, girl. Steve from Maryland. Um, love the show. Just called to make reference to your two Instagram bets. Um, you're not really hedging your bet if on the second bet you bet the same thing <laughs> as each other. What you would have to do is bet the opposite and <laughs> do double or nothing. That's really good thinking. I mean, and then he's you'd be totally right. Bet or you'd be losing twice as much. But if you guys bet the same thing, you'd still be up one if if you lose the uh, the bet. So Damn it. didn't really hedge it that that much. <laughs> <laughs> he's all, oh, but at least he loves the show. Um, Thank you. I just want to say, I think his name was Steve. Yes. Yeah. Steve in Maryland. If you ever want to come to San Francisco and come on the show and give me a lesson in how to gamble, I would 
absolutely 100% appreciate it because yeah. I am like honestly I came up with the idea for this show to be a gambling show and that was one of the dumbest things I've ever done because <laughs> I don't know how to gamble I've <laughs> never won any money ever while gambling I have lost every amount of money that anyone has ever let me gamble and I just fundamentally don't understand it. Like, I've always wanted us to double down and d go for nothing. Right, but we couldn't but figure couldn't, out how. We couldn't figure out how. <laughs> we were like, oh, so, yeah, when we were first, like, talking about the show, we are like, yeah, we'll do double downs that day. And then we're like, yeah, we're like, how would we double down? What would that mean? So if somebody wanted to take it upon themselves to come up with some sort of rubric for us, if it wants to be, if it, you want to do it, Steve, that would be radical. Um, and we'll do it. Uh, totally, because this show is a work in progress. We're always looking to... It's always evolving. Be, exactly. To get yes. better and bigger. Yes, we are growing. We're growing. <laughs> Grow with us. Um, I do know to always double down on 11, as Sparkman in the chat room said. I know how to play blackjack. I don't know how to bet on this show. <laughs> I watched you win. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. At CES, yeah, I the was three like of us high in Vegas roller. watched Kareen win. Yeah, I won like 300 bucks. I have again. to say, I've never felt more poor in my life. I said that I said that the first time today when I was in Best Buy buying my brother headphones, but no, watching you guys gamble when I had no money in the bank and couldn't even get anything out of the ATM <laughs> was one of the low points of my life. I have to say. <laughs> CES was such an awesome week. Um, so we have one more voicemail to, to uh, listen to. Yeah, and this one is related to one of our stories we did today, and it's about Windows 8 tablets. And I don't know who it's from. Sorry. So when talking about tablet ecosystem, wouldn't Windows 8, like, be the king over it all if it went and actually does come out? Because Windows can do iTunes. And it can also do the Amazon Prime thing from from both those systems. And um, that's all I was wondering is, is wouldn't Windows, if a tablet does come out, be the king of content since it can all since it can do the iTunes, it can do Amazon, and plus its own Xbox Live content that is being hyped up a lot as well. Um, that's my question. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I yeah, kind of agree. I think he's right. I think it would have, you know, it would be able to do content from everywhere plus its own, you know, Xbox Live content. I think the thing when people think of tablets, so they think of apps. And I think, you know, Windows doesn't have as many apps as the other guys do now. And so native apps, mm -hmm. you know, or, or apps the way the app market is or like you know windows 8 I, this isn't necessarily true i'm not sure but like they don't have instagram or they don't have i mean yeah, they does, don't have instagram. or they don't have um a kindle app yet let's say and so it's not it doesn't have as many apps as the other guys so yes even though the ipad is tied to its itunes you know or it doesn't have it let's say a pandora app or whatever so yes they can get content they can get amazon prime content and itunes content or whatever mm -hmm. but they can't but they don't have as many far-reaching uh apps as the other ones do yet. Yes. Yeah. The, the so, key is that they may soon. And with, I mean, the developers have had it. It's coming out. People are, Microsoft's putting such a huge push behind it that especially to get those like eight apps that you just named that are the kind of cornerstones of yeah, the or app like a world. Netflix, let's say. I mean, I'm not sure. What, yeah. So I think that it wouldn't be as, that difficult to get them. And then in that case, yeah. And also, you know, Windows just has a reputation for being a lot more open to all sorts of software. And like one of the reasons why you can't get Amazon Prime content on the iPad is because Apple doesn't want to let Amazon have a piece of its pie. You know? Right. It's Except because they do allow the Kindle app on the uh, iPad. Yeah. And you can buy stuff that's about well, it. Yeah. I never said they weren't hypocrites. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, no, but so I think that Windows would be a lot more likely to let that be on there, and that would be awesome. Yeah, well, totally. And I think, I mean, again, that's, I think, just, it, I think it could, it does have the potential mm -hmm. to be the one tablet to rule them all, of course, because it is open. It has the potential to have Netflix, Hulu, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever, all these native apps. I mean, unless they, unless the other tablet makers have, like, you know, exclusivity rights to Netflix, which I don't think they do. So I think, that, I think Netflix is like, we'll give it to you for free. Please you want another it. free trial? Here, take it. <laughs> totally. I know, poor Netflix. <laughs> so um, anyway, thanks for spending a moment of your week with us here at Rumor Has It. Yes. Call us at 1-800-750-CNET with any comments, tips, complaints, yays, suggestions nays, for humiliation Suggestions day. or email us at rumorhasit at cnet.com and see you next week.